In 1992, following the success of Capcom Street Fighter II, Midway Games released Mortal Kombat. The game would go on to change the way violence was viewed in video games, spawn seemingly countless sequels, and kick off a 19-year run that still holds strong today. So I clearly remember when Mortal Kombat was coming uh, to the arcades, and I know that sounds weird because like, how could I possibly know Mortal Kombat was coming to the arcades before it came out? Um, it's because we were way into Street Fighter, like we were like at the arcades like every day. You know, we, we knew everybody there, including the arcade operator, and so he was the guy that would straight up tell us about, you know, the new games coming out. And so we were playing Street Fighter one day, and he straight up was rolling in like, I don't know, you know, World of Heroes or something. But I remember him telling us there was a new game that, that he saw that, that was going to be coming in like in a week or whatever, and it was a lot like Street Fighter, except it was with real people, and there was blood. and like. We were, he pretty much had us at real people. We were like, whatever, Street Fighter with real people, that sounds awesome. First time I saw it in arcades was, uh, I guess, maybe my freshman year of high school. And I saw it in um, some, some arcade in Dallas, and it was like, hey, those guys, they're all like realistic looking. It's, it's that weird digitized thing. And I saw in the corner that there was this game that had digitized characters. And my first thought was, oh, hey, it's a new Pit Fighter. Because Pit Fighter has kind of the same visual style as, as Mortal Kombat. And then I look closer and I'm like, whoa, no, this is like, this is a new fighting game. What, what, this is kind of crazy. I think the first time I saw it, it was on a machine that had the uh, violence dip switch switched off, which might have explained why I wasn't all that interested. But then once it was like, wow, so I just uppercut this guy and then he like falls off the ledge and gets impaled on spikes and man, that's, that's pretty wild. That game was was kind of like a, a, a bombshell in the arcade scene at that time, just because nothing else that that I had seen or played was was you know just gruesomely over the top like that. I think one of the great things about Mortal Kombat was is just that were so many kind of hidden things about it. Uh, the kind of things that where you only knew how to do something if you heard from a friend of a friend that you could do it. It was probably about, like, it must have been maybe like two or three days that, you know, the machine had been in the uh, arcade and it was the first time that somebody had done it by accident. Um, it was a scorpion, of course, and somebody straight up, up, up at the end of the fight. You know, because like, it was clear that there was some kind of call to action. It was like, finish him, right? And it was like, it seems like there is something that should happen, but we, you know, we punch the dude, kick the dude, and be like, ha, right? But the first time that somebody did the scorpion fatality by accident and, you know, scorpion straight up rips open that cowl and, boom, you know, lights that dude on fire and he turns into a, you know, skeleton and falls to the ground. I mean, it was, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget it. Uh, so what was funny was that people were trying to do the fatalities. They knew that they were in there, but they didn't really know how to do them. So it was funny to watch people kind of just try different stuff out and then just, the end result was just a quick punch or something. But then I remember the first time that somebody did Kano's uh, fatality where he reaches in and grabs their heart and you know holds it up and the place went nuts people were just like oh my god and it was just so violent and so amazing everybody was just going crazy I, I wound up being a pretty big fan of the first game but I recognized that it was really simple you know just about every character had a projectile and then they had like a, a charging across the screen attack and the, the, all their jumping attacks were pretty much interchangeable um, so I, I had a lot of fun with it, and I really enjoyed it, and I was like looking forward to the home versions, but uh, it was Mortal Kombat 2 is when I just like totally flipped out about it. Fight! It wasn't until MK2 that it like really clicked. For me and I actually printed up like sheets of all the moves and I'd sell them to the kids around me for like a dollar it's like you know just just more quarters so I could play but then I had all the move lists and I was like bringing out Kung Lao who I thought was like so awesome he had that cool hat I'd go on and on and tell you about how happy I was about that game and that game was amazing and that game was amazing because it had so much to it and the, yeah the thing that's crazy is every single character they introduced in two was just awesome it's like Milena and Katana and Baraka were just so awesome once I played Mortal Kombat 2, like that was it. I was I was gone. I was lost. It took some things that were wrong with the original Mortal Kombat in terms of just kind of the stiffness, and it improved it a little bit. I mean, Mortal Kombat's kind of defining characteristic is its stiffness and how just how every punch, every kick just has weight behind it. 
Um, but I think Mortal, Mortal Kombat 2 tweaked everything just enough to keep that in, but just made the game flow so much better. And then there were just like the secrets. The secrets for that game were insane. There was the whole the introduction of just the little toasty guy popping up on the bottom screen. People are like, what is that? That's crazy. What does that mean? So I don't, I don't understand why some people suggest uh, that Mortal Kombat 3 or Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is somehow the pinnacle of the series, because clearly it was two. Mortal Kombat 3 was kind of crazy for me because I remember the first screenshot uh, that they showed, the character versus screen, and the art was like super cool. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, and it's saw some backgrounds and stuff. And then I saw that they were adding the run button. It's not a feature that I hated, but it's just something that I could have done without, too. Uh, I saw 3 in the arcade, so I was excited for it. I was like, hey, they got these really cool, you know, visual effects, like the fireball blows up and it's it looks like something from a movie and and all that but then the characters were like striker uh, cabal uh, night wolf uh, mk3 was kind of regrettable i thought the run button was junk i hated that and the uh, the ai in the games was really starting to wear on me at that point especially like ultimate mk3 it's like you play jade or someone it's like i can do my fireball move to you twice and then after that, every time that I try it, you're gonna instantly turn on your little fireball transparency move and then run up close to me and then just totally jack me. At first, like the move to 3D, I was just automatically turned off because part of the charm of MK is, was like the digitized characters. And the characters as they were in MK4 didn't look that great. I mean, they looked pretty terrible. Um, and just the addition of the weapons and stuff, I just felt like Mortal Kombat was trying to be something it wasn't. Oh yeah, I remember being so disappointed because it was going to go 3D, right? Mortal Kombat in 3D is going to be awesome. No, it's not. Because like when they brought it, it was just like, oh yeah, it just wasn't awesome. It had weapons and it was just like, it just didn't feel like Mortal Kombat. And then, uh, and then I'll be honest, I was done. Like being as big of a huge Mortal Kombat fan as I was, they had like straight up you know, it burned me. Like, I had felt like three and four had been a stretch. Four was just whatever. And then they started doing this, you know, I guess it was like, what, Deception, Deadly Alliance, Armageddon, like, all those ones that lost the numbers and just put names on it. It's like, there's a reason for that. Deception just had a ton of stuff in it, and I was really impressed by that, and I felt that, like, they were making great progress in terms of refining the direction that they were going in with the weapons and kind of the 3D movement and things like that. I was like, okay, like, I, I'm... I'm down with this, this is pretty cool. But then it got in with Deadly Alliance, which actually wasn't that bad either. But then like, I think Armageddon was the last one before MK versus DC. And that's when they threw in that stuff like the, the adventure mode where you could walk around and, and stuff with this separate character. And at that point I was just like, no, they, they weren't making enough changes to the series at that point. It was just kind of like, okay, we'll do a few incremental upgrades here and there. We'll throw in this extra content because the main game isn't really the star of the show anymore. It felt like they almost lost confidence in what Mortal Kombat was at that point and they didn't really know what to do with it. So they built up this stuff around it to kind of sell it a little bit better. But I think, yeah, it just, it was kind of obvious at that point that like my, my, Love Affair with Mortal Kombat ended. I just didn't, I'm like, no, nah, the series just isn't going in a direction that I really care for at this point. So I didn't, you know, didn't really, didn't really strike me as, as one of the marquee fighters anymore at that point. Every, everything about Mortal Kombat um, beyond the main line of games was trash until Shaolin Monks. no tournament this time. You must take the fight out to the arena and defeat these enemies in their realm. Shaolin Monks, it, it was just like, because it's an action RPG combined with Mortal Kombat, but it was, it was a, a crazy co-op thing. Because it, uh, it was Liu Kang and Kung Lao together. And like you could be juggling a guy with uh, Kung Lao in the corner and then your friend could throw a fireball and like continue the juggle, which was just like this really cool idea. So it was, it was ba the basic mechanics of Mortal Kombat in the new place cooperatively. So it was a really great idea. Really, if you look at, at you know, Mortal Kombat, you know, now, to me it's like that new game is basically really a love letter to anybody that was a fan of 1-2 and a little bit of the three guys. You know, you got Striker and Cyrax and those characters. They kept all the good elements, basically, of three and, you know, threw out the run button and all kinds of other stuff, right? I, I absolutely love the new one. It's, it's one of those things that I grew up with Street Fighter 2, which I absolutely adore, and I grew up with Mortal Kombat. So Street Fighter 4 goes back to its root, and I didn't really like it. It felt like it was, it felt derivative, I guess, because I loved 3 and I loved Versus and Alpha so much that I didn't want to go back to 2. 
But with Mortal Kombat, it went in such an awful direction after 3, that when I returned to it, I was like, this is what I want. So I've been playing the new Mortal Kombat at home, and it's like, the story is just, I mean, it's awful. But it's really entertainingly awful. You get to learn these characters in ways that you normally wouldn't, because I'm not normally going to play a Sonya Blade. All of a sudden, I have to play as her, and she's an awesome character. And I just, I love the way it's structured, and I love that there's the talking between each fight, and it just, it feels like an adventure game in a fighting game, which I love. And then there's the tower, and then there's the, the hidden characters, and then there's I mean, the roster of characters, and the fatalities, and the babalities, and it's like everything you would want is in this game, and it's awesome. You know, I, I've enjoyed the past, I guess 20 years is going to be next year, so I've enjoyed the past, you know, 19 years of Mortal Kombat, and I look forward to hopefully 20 more years. We'll see.